Welcome to Hunter Golf. My name is Sean O'Neill. I'm the field operations manager here at Hunter Industries. I'm going to explain a little bit about our Pilot FC controller today. Basically, you have several components make up the controller. You have your face pack, which is where you enter all of your information. The face pack is actually uh, has the ability to go into multiple languages, so you can select the language that you choose. The buttons can also have their language changed by just simply sliding out a card and putting in the language of your choice. Moving down in the controller, we have communication modules that are green. They are on the top of the main circuit board. And anything in blue is our outputs to the field. This controller has the ability to go up to 80 stations, 40 stations on the front, and 40 stations on the rear. Each side has the ability to have up to six common wires connected to the ground plane. Plus, they also have a test post on both sides. So when you are wiring the controller, you can just touch this, it is 24 volts, and it will turn on your sprinkler, and then you place the wire on the correct station number. The output modules also have manual switches. When you activate a switch, the LED comes on. You also get an indication in the display that a switch is in the out of auto position. Now when I turn this switch on, the sprinkler will operate for up to 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, the sprinkler will stop. Even though the switch is in the on position and out of automatic, the irrigation will still occur if it is scheduled to do so that night. When the switch is in the off position, the LED will blink, indicating that the station is off. In this position, the sprinkler will not run in the nightly irrigation if it is scheduled to do so. But you also get your display in the, in the face back that the switch is out of position. Turn it back to auto, the light goes out. Communications, you have hardwire, radio, and we also have a license-free spread spectrum option. You can mix and match all types of communications within the same controller. In this instance, we have a hardwire module and a radio module. All of our controllers come with a number two screwdriver. This is the only tool you need to service this controller. If I come down to the hardwire module, normally there would be cables attached here. So if I wanted to remove this module, I would unplug my cables so that you don't have to unscrew them. And then I just use the two screws on the module to it remove. The screws are captive, so they will not fall out. You cannot lose these screws. Also, the module itself is grounded by these two small copper contacts behind the screws. When you put this back into the controller, there is matching bosses on this plane. This plane is then grounded to your ground rod out on the, on the golf course. So when I put this back in, I put the two screws make sure that they are securely attached and then grounding has been achieved. In the hardwire version, we have the ability at each controller to have the incoming signal come in on one channel and then we can split that signal in two different directions at every location. If you require maintenance radio to operate your sprinklers on the golf course, you would simply add a UHF radio module to any controller on the system. This then is, has the ability to operate all satellites that you have on your project. Just one radio, all satellites. Your power supply is switchable, so it has the ability to have 110 and 220 in the same transformer. The electrical wiring compartment has been specially designed so that when the installers put this onto a concrete pedestal, we have special fittings that we can put into that compartment to make it totally UL uh, satisfied. Thank you, and that concludes the demonstration of the field controller.